with great honor we present the 25 best Yankees playoff games of the last 25 years. And in the first chapter, Tino beats the Padres. After a dominant regular season, the Yankees fell behind the eight ball in Game 1 of the 1998 World Series. The 1998 Yankees are almost certainly the most dominant Yankee team most of us will ever see in our lifetimes. Considering that most of us have seen several other World Series winning teams as well, and hopefully will be back soon, it's remarkable that they are so clearly ahead. Even in June and July, the 2022 Yankees were at a pace that could match what the 1998 team did and didn't come close. Say what you will about the 2022 team's weaknesses, but this is proof that winning 114 games is incredibly hard to compare with winning 98. However, all this meant nothing when the playoffs began. As evidenced by what happened on the National League team last season, anything can happen in a smaller sample size than baseball. For all the good work the 1998 Yankees did throughout the year, they still had work to do in the World Series. In Game 1, it became an extremely timely job. Having said that, let's go to the game. 1998 World Series Game 1, October 17. Final score, Yankees 9, Padres 6. Game MVP, Tino Martinez. After sweeping the ALDS, the Yankees were pushed a bit in the ALCS. Cleveland took a 2-1 lead over them before the Yankees snapped three straight to return to the World Series for the second time in three years. Waiting for them on the other side was a surprise package on the San Diego Padres. The Padres were an outstanding team in 1998, winning 98 games with a roster that featured Hall of Famers Tony Gwynn and Trevor Hoffman, as well as future Yankee Kevin Brown, who arguably should have been NL Cy Young that season. That said, they were definitely underdogs in the NLCS against the Braves, who won 106 games that season. However, San Diego jumped out to a 3-0 series lead, defeating Atlanta's trio of John Smoltz, Tom Glavine, and Greg Maddox. The Braves made the series somewhat tight, but San Diego ended up clinching it by defeating Glavine for the second time in Game 6. Instead of a rematch in 96, it was the Padres who would face the Yankees in the Fall Classic. The Game 1 pitching showdown would feature Brown for San Diego and David Wells for New York, coming off a season that featured his perfect game. The Yankees got the series off to a great start when Ricky Letty doubled home two runs off Brown in the bottom of the second. Down the right field line. It's a fair ball. Davis scores. Martinez scores. They will hold Posada. It's 2-0 New York. When you see that many pitches, the pitches start becoming predictable. Lede gets a fastball and ropes it down the line just fair. I think Joe Torre has found his left fielder, at least for one at bat. <laughs> Ricky Lede in there tonight, the two aces matching up. You figured it to be a low scoring game. Joe Torre says he plays solid defense, he has a good arm in the outfield. However, the Padres responded quickly in the third. Greg Vaughn hit a two-run home run off Wells, leveling things off. Soon after, San Diego would take control of the game. A pair of home runs by Gwen and Vaughn gave the Padres a 5-2 fifth inning lead. While Wells was struggling, his Padres opponent wasn't exactly dominant either. Brown entered the game battling a sinus infection and was also hit in the shin by a Chili Davis liner in the second inning. He posted a 1.44 ERA in 25 innings through the first two playoff rounds, but was not as dominant against the Yankees, possibly due to the aforementioned issues. In the first six innings, 11 Yankee hits made at least five pitches. 
However, the Yankees were unable to deliver a killing blow. In the fifth, they had two goals and only one out, but were unable to reduce the deficit. While Wells finally managed to fight his way through seven innings going into the bottom of the seventh, the Yankees were nine outs away from defeat. After Brown took the first of the seventh, he allowed a single to Jorge Posada and led Letty to four pitches. That would end their day as Padres manager Bruce Bochy went to Don Wall to face Chuck Knobloch. Up to that point, Knobloch had not had the best of the postseason, having gone 6-4-36 and making a big mistake in one of the ALCS losses. However, he made up for it by taking the third pitch of the hit just over the wall in Vaughn's jump attempt. With the home run, the Yankees were given new life and still had the meaty part of the team marked. Derek Jeter added a single, prompting Bochy to step back into the bullpen. Mark Langston came in and sent Paul O'Neill flying, but then he launched a wild pitch, which put Jeter in scoring position. San Diego then opted to pitch around Bernie Williams and put him on an intentional walk. However, this didn't work out too well as he then made a regular walk to Davis, carrying the bases. That brought Tino Martinez to the plate. Like Knobloch, Martinez had really struggled through the postseason up to that point, having posted an OPS of 583 in the first two rounds. He had tied at the start of this game, but otherwise it was 0-2. Against Langston, Martinez worked the count to 2-2 before catching one of the most infamous single pitches of the series. Home plate umpire Richie Garcia called a ball to a very close pitch, taking the count to 3-2 to two instead of knocking the Padres out of the inning with the game still tied. Sounds like the right decision to me, Blue. It might be. This turned out to be a huge turnaround as just one pitch later. Martinez's grand slam completed a seven-run innings for the Yankees that turned a three-run deficit into a four-run lead. The Yankees then brought in Jeff Nelson to face San Diego's heart of the order. He got two outs, but not before allowing a single to Gwen and walking Ken Kaminiti. At that point, Joe Torre went to his closest, Mariano Rivera, to make a four-out save. The first batter Rivera faced was Wally Joyner, and the two struggled. On the tenth pitch of the strike, Joyner hit one to Knobloch, who couldn't take it. He misjudged slightly as the ball deflected over the top of his glove and into the outfield, scoring a run. Knobloch would make the ground play on the next drive, but the Yankees' lead dropped to three. On their break in the eighth, the Yankees left the bases loaded, failing to get some potentially useful insurance runs. However, the ninth inning was much cleaner for the Yankees, as Rivera struck out two before Quilvio Veras came out to end the game. It was a crazy streak, but the Yankees got off to a perfect start to the World Series with a Game 1 win. However, it wouldn't be the last time they needed some heroics in their journey to the title. Yankees fans, as long as... What about Yankees fan? Enjoyed the memory of defeating an opponent in an exciting game? Subscribe because for 25 days we will bring you the 25 best and most exciting Yankees games and playoffs of last year's. Here is the first video of these 25 that will be uploaded every day. Gather the children in the room and show them. As we have always been and will continue to be strong. Or better saying, the greatest team in MLB history. As long as a child's heart exists, the New York Yankees will be immortal.